the Hydrovision International 2012 Exhibit Hall, uh, I've run across MWH Global. MWH has been a longtime supporter of this event. Uh, this year is no different. They're an exhibitor, a sponsor, with Paul Blasek, a vice president with MWH. Paul, thanks for joining us Absolutely. today. Absolutely. My pleasure. Yeah. You know, MWH is a well-known name in the industry, but tell us a little bit about what you really do, what the mission of the company is. Sure. MWH provides strategic consulting, technical engineering, and construction services around the world. We're 7,500 people in 35 countries. Uh, we've worked on projects ranging in all types and sizes, in all geographies, from the 10,000 megawatt Guri project in Venezuela to we're just finishing up a 42 megawatt project in Fiji. Uh, the, our commitment to renewable energy uh, exemplifies our corporate purpose of building a better world and our commitment to sustainable development. Now here at Hydrovision, which is in Louisville, Kentucky this year, um, one of the features of the event was a tour of the Canelton locks and dams where um, MWH is working with American Municipal Power to build um, a project there. And so tell us about that and, and MWH's role in that project. Sure. Uh, we're very excited to be teaming with AMP on those projects. Um, they've been a long time coming. Uh, as Mark Gherkin noted in his keynote address, uh, AMP hired us back in 2007 to do screening studies on uh, the Ohio River projects. We looked at each of the 10 locks and dams on the Ohio River projects and ranked them from 1 to 10 uh, in terms of their technical ability to generate power, regulatory issues that might have developed, uh, and things of that nature. And then AMP went back and picked basically the top four projects and developed them. And so Canelton is one of those. Uh, it's being built at the U.S. Army Corps of Engineer facility uh, in, near Hawesville, Kentucky. Uh, it's an 84 megawatt project. It's uh, capitalizing on the 25 feet ahead that's there. Uh, it's a three unit plant. Uh, and it's started construction in 2009. So we've been working on it for five years and, and it'll go into commissioning here soon and, and be online in 2014. Excellent, and then more to come then along the Absolutely, River. absolutely. We're working on four projects in total, four other ones other than Canelton. Uh, Smithland, which is the furthest downstream, that's a three unit plant as well, uh, taking advantage of the 22 feet ahead that the core dam uh, put together. Powerhouse construction just started there. We placed our first uh, set of concrete. Uh, then we have Meldal. We're also working on that project. That's uh, a three-unit plant as well near Cincinnati. Uh, that one is well along, uh, just slightly behind uh, Canelton. It'll go. In, it'll commission in 2015, and Smithland will also commission in 2015. And then Willow Island's the fourth one. Uh, under construction. Cofferdam construction is essentially complete. We're about to start rock excavation for the powerhouse there. Uh, and then the fifth project that we're helping AMP with is RC Bird. They're currently in the licensing phase with that. So our FERC license application has been submitted. Uh, we've gotten our first response in terms of additional information requests, so we're working through that. You know, Paul, you mentioned the, the head of those projects, which is actually quite low for, for hydro. Um, so I would imagine there's been some design and technical uh, innovations or solutions that you've had to look at with these projects, not only the low head, but the um, existing civil infrastructure. Uh, share with us a bit about um, some of the, the innovative things that you've come up with as a result of that. Sure, sure. We did a project for AMP back in the 1990s called Belleville, also located on the Ohio River at another core dam. And we've taken that design, which is essentially, the powerhouse is essentially a submarine. A very small piece of the powerhouse extends above the Ohio River. Uh, and this is primarily due to the fact that the powerhouse in flooding conditions, because we're adding it to an existing facility, we cannot change the profile of the reservoir upstream in flood cases. So the powerhouses are actually designed to be fully submerged. And so in large floods, when the river flows are high, the powerhouse actually goes underwater and you don't even see it other than the access buildings on either side. So that, that's something that we were able to uh, incorporate into each of the power plants because obviously the criteria at each of these facilities relative to floods are the same. Um, um, another unique opportunity here, hydro projects are very unique and no two are, are, exactly are alike, alike yeah. but, but we were able to capitalize not only on our experience with Belleville, but we, we were able to then standardize that to the extent possible for all four of these projects. Right, which I'm sure was cost effective for Absolutely, AMP. absolutely. And it helps with operation and maintenance, training of personnel, the facilities will look and feel the same, and so AMP can move around their operations personnel from site to site. Uh, so that was positive. And then we also did, uh, we have closure structures that with the powerhouse, we have closure structures that tie into the existing dam as well as to the abutment to, to form that damming element. 
And those closure structures are, particularly at Smithland and Cannelton, where we're not founded on rock, pose some pretty interesting design challenges for us. So we came up with an innovative solution to use hard fill, which is basically using on-site sands and mixing it with cement and building the dams out of that. And that saved AMP quite a bit of money and, and enabled us to, to provide access to the powerhouse and provide the dam safety that's needed by both FERC and the Corps. Okay. You know, earlier you mentioned this term, building a better world. Yes. And as you talk about the design solutions and, and some of the innovations you've done there, it really sounds like uh, you're applying that slogan, slogan to the hydropower market. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, hydropower is, is fundamental to building a better world. Uh, we've been in the hydropower business for 100 years. Um, HARS Engineering merged with MWH, with MW, Montgomery Watson, back in 2001 to form MWH, but we've been providing hydropower solutions around the world for 100 years. And hydropower provides needed energy, particularly in developing countries. Uh, we just finished a project in, in uh, Africa, Ethiopia, Tukesi project, which really helped stabilize the grid. The country always had traditionally had brownouts, and that, that bringing that project online eliminated uh, most of the brownout situations there. The project I mentioned earlier in Fiji that we're finishing is actually going to be providing energy to communities that have never had power before. And so in developing nations, hydropower projects are of particular importance and really an integral part of building a better world, not only because of the energy they provide, but the flood, the flood protection, irrigation, the water supply. Um, so all of those things wrap up um, really are, in essence, our commitment to uh, building a better world and sustainable development. You know, the fact that you're working all over the world, um, you see a lot of, of the trends that are happening and, and really what the future could look like um, for hydro. Can you share with us just, uh, just a snapshot of that? Sure, sure. We, uh, there's been a resurgence here domestically um, with hydropower, which is great. And we see that continuing. Uh, the projects on the Ohio River are a great example where we have dams that ha are, have been built and have been in operation for a long time. And now we're taking advantage of that and adding power without doing any environmental impacts whatsoever upstream because those dams have been there. So I see we see that trend continuing. Um, we hope to see the continued investment in uh, planning and, and uh, potentially of the pump storage project. Right, right. We think that's going to be integral to the energy solutions here, uh, particularly to help with wind and solar integration to stabilize the grid. So we, look, we think that investment will continue there. Uh, and globally, uh, in our Latin American offices, hydro continues to be a boom. Uh, Panama and Peru, it's a major, major workforce down there. So we, we believe that with all of the issues around water and all of the issues around energy needs around the world, it's an exciting time to be in the hydro market for sure. Well, we think that as well. And we appreciate you being here today. Absolutely. Thanks for My sharing pleasure. a bit of your time. Okay. Great. Thank you.